I'm looking for good solid grows, you know, resistant to bugs. Uh, it's going to be something that's going to be squat. I don't like growing tall. So, yeah, um, it's very characteristic for me. Um, but a lot of that can be less about genetics and more on environment. You know, you could you could have a some a, a, pl a plant that's going to grow squat, but if you have your if you've got your light too high up or too dim or you've got you're using CFLs or T5s and you're trying to get it to late flower, that squat plant could probably stretch out for you. Mm -hmm. So, it is genetics genetics genetics, but you can have the best genetics in the game. But if your environment is drying up and or it's way too moist, too hot, too cold, your genetics aren't going to cut it, you know? And well, so a lot of big variables there. Well, that's, I think, the that. phenotype conversation. Not that we'll dive into that, but is it the environmental effect on the particular cultivar that's sh showing these characteristics? Or is it just naturally that characteristic from the particular seed, just like it would be a baby, is a little different based on this amount of X, Y, Z, you know? Mm -hmm. I really think that that drives more, in my opinion, I see in still in the grow. We were talking earlier, uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks ago, we'll say, about an episode, uh, you know, growing a particular cultivar under HID in the commercial setting versus the home grow in the LED setting. There's other variables that come into play, but the environmental impact and how that particular cultivar grows is like a phenotype expression, you know. So I think that's where that argument comes into play, where genotype versus phenotype. But that, that's such a huge factor with your environment because you could say that like, oh, Cindy ninety nine loves this, this, and this, but this particular phenotype doesn't. Hmm. So now you have to really change your entire approach. Versus just, oh, well, this is the general rule of thumb. Environment should have this humidity, this temperature, this VPD we're hitting. That's another one, the VPD. I say this a lot. Vapor pressure deficit. Vapor pressure deficit. That's a, a, a real science that a lot of people have been using as a bro science, I feel, of just matching a chart. But <laughs> it actually goes to a real science. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the most simple version of it. If you want to maybe break it down a little bit, we're talking about it outside. Yeah, I mean, vapor pressure deficit measured in KPA, kilopascals. Um, I, I don't have them all memorized, but here's... I. I'm going to pull up a cheat sheet, you know what I mean? Like, That's why we got them. Here we right, are. Right, so the KPA for clone seedlings, 0.6 to 1.0. This is according to Pulse Monitor, by the way. Shout out to Pulse. I know a lot of you guys run their monitors. Um, good stuff. They have a really good page with all this information. Veg, 0.8 to 1.2 KPA, and then flower, 1.2 to 1.5 KPA. But I'm one of the people that you had mentioned is looking at the chart. What's the <laughs> yeah. temperature at? Okay, what humidity should I be at? And there's the dark green range, which is like the most optimal. And then there's the lighter green range with, within the dark green range or outside the dark green range. And a lot of people say that's fine. That's like a 10 degree swing at all, you know, yeah. sometimes and stuff like that. And then there's obviously the orange range. And, you know, the more green it is, the more ideal humidity it is for the plant stomata to open up, you know transpiration purposes kind of like uh, a lot of people compare it to us breathing right? humans breathe yeah. plants their version of breathing is transpiration so just kind of having that uh stomata open yeah, they said leads like, to better growth faster growth more optimal growth so that's, that's vpd and that's why a lot of people manipulating the environment though for the crop better. steering yeah, yeah exactly exactly yeah. people are hot word against that yeah crop <laughs> crop steering is it's thing. like people throw that word around yeah. and it's like we're all like kind of messing around with our environment to make things better. And that's pretty much what crop steering is. <laughs> yeah. We're manipulating to steer the direction of the crop. And in this case, like plant training, uh, environmental shifts, um, how long you veg plant, even like these technically are all that. But I think when you're looking at your environment, there's a, a, a make or break point where it's like you become over the top with it, where everything is like analytical and perfect, or there's kind of let it go and it do its thing. And I've had too many times where each phase doesn't have the optimal VPD and I don't get the best growth versus when it's tightened up and it's done right, you notice a difference. It's like a steroid growth. It really, like you can see, same with hitting the right EC, you know, with feeding. When you really dial stuff in and you don't just try to bro science it, you can really see that difference in your plant, especially a side by side. You're like, whoa, this looks double the size. I did nothing different. It's like, well, I just dialed it in. I did stuff more scientifically instead of just bro science. And I'm a total victim of my own arrogance sometimes where I'm like, this plant did great. So I'm going to put another genetic in here and assume it's going to follow suit and do great. And I'm like, why is this one so small? Why didn't this produce good smoke, but it's small? It's like, she wanted a different environment. Mm. She wanted, you know, in particular, this chemistry seems to like a little bit cooler temperatures. As we're headbanger, I could let it get pretty hot in there. Mm. No problem. But it's like, I have three other cultivars in that space that totally are fine with what my environment currently is. So it's one of those things where it's like, do I call the herd? Do I monocrop a certain room? 
Do I crop steer? Try to make it work for me? I think the environment is such a crucial thing for your room because you can literally get a pest or disease based on if it's too bad. And if it's too good, per se, it seems like I don't get the best results. It's almost more when I do the hippie way of things like beating the plan up and not being too anal about it. I get better results. But when I'm in there constantly, I don't get nearly as good of results. But if you don't have a tent or a closed-in space that's temperature uh, sealed and everything, you can't control your environment. It's only for that single time when you're running the equipment. This FTS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code the stash 15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.